Hi, welcome back. So this one is going to be uh, a tutorial on how to dive. Dive like a pro is what I'm calling this. So everybody in FPV, um, there's some essential techniques and some essential tricks that you just have to be good at, one of which is diving. I'll, um, I'll go out on a limb here and say that diving is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love diving everything from a wide open space all the way down to a gap just big enough to fit my quad. So um, in this, I'm going to give up some of my secrets on how to do that. Um, against my better judgment, but I want you guys to be able to do some cool dives too. So here we go. Check it out. All right, first things first, setup, right? A lot of people um, or a lot of pilots have their cameras configured in a 10 degree or zero degree or somewhere in about between zero and 25 degree up tilt. Um, mine is at about 45 plus. Uh, there's a couple of reasons I do that. One is for speed. I always want to have good forward momentum when I'm performing a trick, but something I've learned over time because I've had this camera angle probably for like two plus years now is that it, it actually helps me dive better. Am I suggesting you, you crank up your camera angle? Maybe, maybe not. It, it may not be a wise decision for everyone because it, it does cause some fantastic, fantastic crashes. But let's get into that, why I think a higher up tilt will help you dive better. First things first, if you have a low camera angle tilt, up tilt, you know, your quad is going to be in about this attitude or maybe this attitude in free fall. Um, what that does is that your props will begin to spool up as you descend, throttle off, and that will pull your quad forward. Something I've learned recently is um, there are some tuning adjustments you can make to change that. Um, my man Crunked had me change some settings in my KISS firmware. I haven't noticed a difference between what I used to run in my PIDs and then what I run now. but. Um, at any rate, it may assist with that spool up. It'll reduce some spool up. But again, um, in air mode, if you're diving and you're at this attitude, the quad will have a more dramatic pull away from the, the steep dive angle you're trying to achieve. What I've noticed is at a higher degree of angle or tilt, you would think that the quad would pull you know, away more aggressively. But actually, at this attitude, it pulls more linear. So you guys have seen me dive that chimney. It's about a three foot across gap. When I go into that gap, I do have to correct or stop that full momentum by over, over tilting. It's a little bit of an advanced maneuver, but over tilt and then reset and dive down. So I'm stopping that drift forward by over correcting and getting a more straight down vertical drop. And then I'm coming back to get my camera so I can see where I'm going and diving straight down. Okay, that's the entry, right? You've spotted your dive. You've committed to the dive. Regardless of camera angle, you know you're going straight down. The next thing is recovery. This is an important one because this gives away, this is a telltale sign of like where you are in your flying abilities. And I say that in the most um, cautious way. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just saying when um, newer pilots recover from the dive, you'll have this bounce effect. And I think a lot of you, including myself, will know, notice that, and I do it still sometimes as well. So you, when you come out of a steep dive, you'll come into that throttle and you'll stay on throttle too long and you'll actually bounce. So you'll come down and then have that little bobble. Um, what I'm suggesting here is a way, a technique to remove that and that's getting into the throttle blip is one and coming into the throttle sooner is two. So coming into the throttle sooner, we'll talk about that first. So you're in a really steep dive and you're coming down hot, right? So what I am suggesting is as you pass through your gap, you start to level the quad out and bring the throttle in sooner than you normally would before you hit the bottom, right? <clears throat> to prevent that. So you're actually gonna come away smoother and fly out. That'll also help with the oscillation. So if you have a poor tune, coming into the pitch and coming into the throttle sooner will eliminate some of that settling with power and that oscillations in a bad tune that we all hate, right? So that mid throttle or the, you know, you settle down, it's like, Whoa! We want to get rid of that. One way to do that is to come down and gradually come away from the dive angle and then fly forward. For me, it's a little easier because a higher up tilt, all I have to do is come out a little bit and then I'm moving forward. If you have less up tilt or lower up tilt, you, gotta, you do have to level out a little bit flatter, which will put you into that undesirable zone, will induce some oscillations, which we don't do. Just add more filtering, you'll be fine. Or uh, <laughs> more stabilization to camera, you'll be fine. The next one is the aggressive throttle blip. And this is my favorite because it is super slick. So you're coming out of a steep dive. You have very little space to go left, right, or forward even. You drop your quad down hard, flat. 
for me, again, it won't be as flat because I have steeper angle, but hard flat, and it's aggressive throttle blip. Boop! And what it does is it gives you that immediate stop at the bottom, but you're coming off of it so you don't bounce the quad. So you're coming down, you aggressive stop, boop, and then you're flying forward smoothly, right? So it's an aggressive off throttle and then a gentle back on throttle using pitch to keep your heading and momentum forward. So um, let's get done talking about it and uh, let's start doing it. Here we go. All right, let's put, let's put these techniques into practical application. So the first one I'm gonna do is show you the mistakes. First mistake will be the bounce. So you're coming into your dive, coming in hard, and you bounce it. And then you're headed out, right? You're bouncing it like a ball. One more time, coming in, get aggressive, and I bounced it. All right, the next mistake is diving too flat on your recovery and bringing in oscillation. So I flatten out, and then I go forward, right? Nobody likes that, the abrupt stop. So I come in. I flatten out, oscillate, and then fly forward. So the stop is not clean. So the first one, let's get rid of that. The first one is you wanna come in to the throttle and pitch sooner and smoother, and then off. And see how I did, I gained no altitude. I was able to fly forward smoothly. So I come in, throttle smoothly, off the throttle. And it's a very fast on throttle, well, smooth on throttle, and then off the throttle quickly to prevent the breath. Next one is the bounce. So I'm diving hard and I come in the throttle hard. So I flatten out because it's a steeper dive or you're going for a more technical dive. So I'm coming in flatter longer. A lot of throttle, off throttle. I'm actually kind of blipping it too if you can see that. But you hear no oscillation. So I'm coming down. And that's it. So my suggestions go out and practice those dive recoveries and get them clean. That's probably one of the more difficult ones right there. But the first one will get rid of the oscillations on a flat dive because again, the mistake is to flatten out on a dive. People flatten out and come into the throttle too slow and you get those oscillations. And then the other one is the bounce. Whoa, all right. Go practice those two techniques. Let me know what you think. All right, have fun. Later, later.